so good to be home. And, uh, it's been a while. And we are looking forward to giving you a word, but also in a, we're going to give you a, some inside, inside, inside something, <laughs> all that cool stuff. Um, hey, if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephes- uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Turn to Ephesians chapter 3. And um, let me grab my phone down here. I want to give a shout out to Tyler. He, um, he uh, this week, Larry came by. I don't know, is Larry here? Larry, did you come to church this morning? Okay. So a guy named Larry came by the church. Tyler didn't know him. And he said, I would love to get baptized. And I would love to get baptized on my birthday. And... Uh, he was turning 80, I guess, and Tyler's like, well, when's your birthday? And it was like in just a few days. And so Tyler, being the good pastor that he is, <laughs> said, I'll meet you down at the lake, Larry, and I will baptize you. And um, that's a good pastor right there that would do that. I, I commend, I commend, uh, look at that, look at, he's Doing it right there, Larry. Tyler, it looked like you had a little bit of a struggle lifting him out of the water, but I'm glad you did. I'm glad I, I saw the video. And I'm like, he's 80. He might not have the strength. Tyler, I hope. Oh, he got up. Good. Praise God. <laughs> that's, why, that's why when I started doing baptisms, you guys... You guys are changing everything around here. The communion cups, all that stuff. But when I started doing, when I do baptisms, I'm like, just bend down at the knees, go down underwater and just come back up again. I am not going to bend you backwards and lift you back up. And, um, but I know, I know that's, uh, what? Next time. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. (laughs) Praise the Lord. That's great. I love your new baptismal, too. That, that was cool, because um, we watched that service online. So. But really, Pastor uh, Tyler and Jessica, they're doing awesome. They're doing awesome, and uh, just, just can't, be, can't be a more proud dad and mom uh, for our kids. So, and you guys, you guys are doing great. You guys are doing great. Anything you want to say before we get into the oh, word? We got a great word. We I'm have a to great get word. How many of you have dreams that you have just thrown up on the shelf and you haven't uh, pursued them? You haven't gone after them? Um, sometimes dreams, uh, you know, can be way out there. But let me tell you, if it's a God thing, yeah. they usually should be way out there. Yeah. Um, A dream shouldn't be necessarily easy for you to obtain, but uh, it's going to take God to obtain it. Can you say amen to that? And so we have got a great word in Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to look at verse number 20 and focus in on just one little line here in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. And uh, before we do this, let's read uh, or say a prayer and just make our confession of faith this morning. Father, we thank you that your word is powerful. We thank you, Lord, that your word's going to get into our heart. It's going to get into our spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that it's going to make a difference in every single one of our lives. We're not just going to hear the word, but Lord, we're going to receive it, believe it, and take hold of it for each and every one of us. Anoint our words. Help us speak clearly. Help us speak boldly. And help us share with love and compassion today. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. says, Now to him who is able... To carry out his purpose. Listen to this. To him who is able to do super abundantly more. Everyone say super abundantly more. Super 
abundantly more. To him who is able to do super abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. Ooh, love it. Now it's just a sh- short little scripture, but I want you to focus in on what it says here. God is able to do super abundantly more. I love that, super abundantly more. Now the Message Bible says it like this. God can do anything, you know. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Church, he does not do it by pushing us, but he simply does it by putting his spirit deeply and gently moving us along, not pushing us, not pushing us. Let's be thankful for what God's done. God's done a lot. God's done a lot, I'm guessing, in your life. God's done a lot in this ministry. God's done a lot of destiny. God's done a lot in our, our lives. But church, and, and, and I want you to, to be thankful for what God's done in you, through you. As, you. as you look at your life, be thankful for that, but don't assume that he's done with what he wants to do. I don't care how old you are. Don't assume that he's done doing what he wants to do. Are you with me this morning? Yeah, it's not done. He's got more. You can be thankful for what God has done, but still be anticipating more. You can be thankful for what God has done, but still be expecting more from God. I'm expecting more. I'm 62, and I'm expecting that my last 10 to 20 years are going to be better than the last 40 years. Amen. I'm expecting more. I love it. A lot of times people reflect on the good old days. You know, they think about the good old days, but I want to encourage you. God is here right now. God is still at work. God has still got a plan for your heart. He's still got a plan for your life. He's still got a plan for your marriage, for your family, for your career, for your ministry, whatever it is, God's still got a plan. Can somebody say amen to that? So what if, what if, what is that what if in your life? What if my family could look like this? What if my my marriage could honestly look like this or that? What if my finances could really see a breakthrough? What if my health could really see that breakthrough? What if my career really began to take off? What if the relationship with my kids was greater than it's ever been. What is that what if in your life? What if you were a person of great influence? What if? What if you grew in your leadership? Or what if you started lifting people like Pastor Jessica was saying this morning? Uh, It wasn't all about you, but it was just about doing what God wants you to do. What if you lifted people, people's lives to a new level of hope? We need hope out there. Can yeah. you say amen? amen? So how do you see yourself? What excites you? What, what dream is in your heart? You know, I'll say it this way, and then we're going to get into just a couple of points. Here's one thing I know about God. When God puts a dream in your heart, it's going to sound like God. When God puts a dream in your heart, it's going to look like God. And when God puts a dream in your heart, it's going to be way too big for you to do without God. I'll say that one more time. When God puts a dream in your heart, it's going to be way too big for you to do without God. 
okay? Without God. So this morning, Pastor Vicki and I are going to just share a couple of amazing thoughts with you when it comes to dreaming bigger, dreaming greater, dreaming uh, larger, and actually some of you just need to dream again. You need to dream again because you stopped dreaming. But get a dream again. Okay? So go ahead, Here we babes. go. Here's some steps that are going to help you out. This is the greatest looking front row I've oh, seen in a way, long time. That Thank is you. true. We, we love having the front row filled and Our looking Arizona what it's filled with. Our Arizona group came to show up this morning. <laughs> no, it's really true. It's good to have you guys back from Arizona. And, um, awesome. Good there's no place you. like Minnesota. <laughs> but it's I know true. you love Arizona. <laughs> So it's really, it's really good. Uh, that's awesome. But I think Got there's a, a reason you smiles. came in June. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, near June. It's getting June. hot there. It's so, hot there. Hot, yeah. hot, hot. So yeah. we're talking about dreaming again, right? We're talking about grabbing hold of that verse that God can do more. Here's the number one thing I want you to write down that we tend to do, and it's don't settle. Did you know that it's common human nature to kind of just settle? And to get comfortable, to get your cozies on and just kind of be sit and settle, and stay put. And the danger in that is that our faith can also settle. Our faith can grow stagnant, and we stop dreaming. We stop believing. We stop expecting. And did you know that before Christopher Columbus ever ventured out of Spain, that everyone thought that was all there was, right? But everything changed after Columbus. They discovered a whole new world. But that never would have happened if he had just settled. Right on. And so what what we're trying to do today is just get you to get a hold of the fact that God has more. Yeah. God has more for your tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm not talking about more stuff, more money, more possessions. We don't need more of that. I'm talking about God has more for you to learn. He has more for you to discover. Yes. He has more for you to experience. He has more for you to accomplish. He has more people he wants you to reach. He has more lives he wants you to touch. God has so much more. That's what we're talking about. God's got more. We as a church have got an opportunity to have more impact than we ever have before. Right. Especially in this age that we're living. Did you realize in Genesis chapter 17... Abraham was 99 years old when God came to him and said, Abraham, I've got more for you. Yeah. I would have been like, ah, wait a minute. (laughs) I've done plenty. Yeah. (laughs) I'm 99. I'm ready to settle down. Yeah. And God says, no, I've got more for you. I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I'm going to make you exceedingly fruitful because I am God Almighty I am God all-sufficient. I am El Shaddai. I am the God of more than enough. Aren't you glad we serve the God of more than enough? Not just enough. Not barely enough. Yeah. God's always got more than enough. He's got more. More than than enough. enough. So I just want you to get a hold of today. God has more in store for you. And I believe the fact that you're here today shows that you believe that. God's not done with you yet. Some of you have hit the stop button. You've hit the pause button. But God's purpose for your life has not stopped. Right. You may be older like Abraham, or you may be older in your 60s. I remember thinking, I, I, I kind of like where we're at. Got two campuses running smoothly. Don't have to be there every week. And God came and said, no, I've got more. I've got more. We'll, we're sharing more about that in a little bit. God has more for you, more opportunities, more open doors, more for you to discover, more people for you to reach. In fact, I believe God's going to show you more of his glory more of his goodness. Yeah. So don't sit down. Don't stop believing. Don't settle. Amen. That's number one. Everyone say, don't settle. don't settle. Don't settle. Come on, don't settle. Number two, get a hold of this. Don't let your setback. How many of you have had a setback in life? Maybe you've had one recently. Maybe you've had one in the past. Maybe you've got one that's coming. Hope not. But maybe you've had a setback. Don't let your setback hold you back. Right. Okay, I know that sounds like a cute little cliche, but but don't let your setback hold you back. back. It's just a setback. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You know, there's more beyond today. There's more beyond yesterday. There's more beyond last year. There's more beyond your disappointment. Some of you have had some disappointment. There's more beyond your disappointment. 
Amen? Amen. There's more beyond that heartbreak. I mean, heartbreak's real. And when you have heartbreak, I want you to know this morning, there's more beyond beyond your heartbreak. There really is. God has more for you. And I know that I'm talking to some people that have had some heartbreak in their life. You've had some heartbreak recently in your life. You've had some setbacks in your life. I get it. I understand it. I know what it's like to have a setback. I know what it's like to have a heartbreak. I understand it. I understand being hesitant. I understand being disappointed. I understand not totally putting your faith out there and having high expectation because it's like, well, I'm just gonna be disappointed again. Can anyone relate to what I'm saying? But here's a powerful, powerful truth. You may have had a setback, but there is a God of a comeback. There is a God of a comeback. And church, I want every one of you that have had a setback who have been struggling with believing and expecting for great things to actually come your way. Sometimes you can be in the midst of of negative for so long, you just can't see yourself getting out of it. Am I talking to anybody this morning? You need to shift your dish. Shift your dish because God's not done. God has more in mind for you. Don't give up. God is all about comebacks, you guys. Church, God is all about restoration. God is all about second chances. God is all about healing. God is all about freedom. You aren't at the, you know, you might be at the end of your chapter, but you're not at the end of the book. That's what I love about books is right now you might be at the end of a chapter and the chapter has been pretty, pretty rough. But you know what? There's another chapter yeah, coming. Not the end of the story. Come There's on. another chapter coming. And I do believe that God is a God of victory and breakthrough. Yeah. Amen. Now, let me just say this before I pass it on to Vicki. Some of you are not in a setback mode, but you're in a maintenance mode. And it's really easy to get into a maintenance mode where you're just settling. Yeah. You just have decided to just settle yeah. for mediocrity. You're just settling for commonplace. You're just settling for average. And you have a tendency of saying, it's, it's really not all that bad, Pastor Joe. I, I'm surviving. I'm not thriving, but I am surviving. And you know what? There is, there is some good... It, when somebody says, I'm surviving, that's not a bad thing because you haven't given up. Right. But I don't want to hear you just say, I'm always surviving. I want you to, to be able to say, I'm thriving. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in one of the best seasons of my life. Some of you actually have to start proclaiming new things and new breakthroughs and new plans for your life. But you won't because you're too afraid of failure again. And I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to encourage you that you serve a God of a breakthrough. Let me quickly give you the prescription for a breakthrough. Just four little things. I could preach on every single one of these for for one whole message, but I'm just gonna give you four little thoughts. This is a prescription for a breakthrough. Number one, get rid of your mindset or or, or setback mentality. Get rid of your setback mentality because you can have so many setbacks that you just just have a setback mentality. You've got to get rid of the setback mentality. Number two, blast through survival mode and blast into comeback mode. Blast into comeback mode. I really do believe that your greatest days are still ahead. I really, it's not just a a positive confession confession from your pastor. (laughs) I really do believe your best days are ahead. Number three, Write down the promises that God's given you. 
You know, God's word is full of promises. If you don't feel like he's spoken to you directly, look in the word for some promises that belong to you and, and, and start standing on them. And number four, be aware of dream thieves. You need to be aware of... You don't have to go too far before you find somebody that's going to try and smother your dream. Smother your, your vision. Smother that. And then number five, experience to obtain his promises. His word is not just full of promises, but his promises belong to you. Yes. Expect to obtain them. Amen. That's good. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. 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 Don't just one settle. more point. From Here's Pastor another one. Vicky. Number three, lift up your eyes. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14, I love this. The Lord said to Abram, Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. That is such a powerful yeah. phrase. I love that. Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. God starts with lift up, look up. Nothing good ever happens by looking down. If you're right. looking, have you ever noticed if, if you're looking down, what do you see? Dirt, rocks, dust, mess. But if you look up, what do you see? A wide open sky, a beautiful horizon. I mean, just endless opportunity. All good things start by looking up. And God says, look from the place where you are. Yes. And God actually said to Abram, what do you see? See, God's doing something here to Abram. He's not just having, this is more than just a conversation. He's trying to get Abram to see something. Now listen to this. Faith is always started by seeing something outside the context of our current reality. Yep. Faith is always started by seeing something beyond where we are. And the current reality for Abram, he had left his home, he had left his country, he had left his father's house. And at this point, when, when God came to him, he was kind of like just wandering from place to place. And God's trying to stir his faith up. He's trying to get him to see with new eyes. I love that. God is saying, I want you to expand your vision. I want you to increase your faith because I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to give you a land that's going to be yours, a land of provision, a land of abundance. And it took faith for Abram to grab a hold of that. And today the same is true for you. God is saying, look up from where you are. Yeah. What do you see? What do you see with your eyes of faith? Can you see a better marriage? Can you see a healed body? Can you see your finances blessed? God says, look up from where you you are. God wants every one of you to see beyond the context of your current reality. Yeah. Reality might be that right now this looks bad, but God wants you to see beyond that. Reality might be that right now, boy, this looks impossible, but God wants you to see beyond that. Yeah. Your current reality may feel like you're floundering and you're trying to find your footing and you're not really feeling much hope for tomorrow, but God wants you to see with eyes of faith. Yeah. He wants you to see opportunity. He wants you to see potential. He wants Very you to good. see beyond your current condition. And it's so interesting because as we were looking at these notes of what God had put in our heart to preach today, they fall so in line with what we're going to be sharing with you in just a, mi in just a minute. Because sometimes we, we kind of get to this place in life where this is good and I'm loving this and I'm kind of taking a step back. And then God comes and says, you know what? I've got more for you, more opportunity, more horizon. And so Abraham's reality at the time was pretty small. And God was speaking something great into his heart. Everything great must start with seeing beyond the current reality. In fact, you remember Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Even if you haven't studied him, let me just tell you, Nehemiah was faced with Jerusalem and the walls of Jerusalem were literally in ruins. I mean, they were literally crumbling and yet he had the faith to see them restored. Yeah. But that took faith. That's exactly right. I want you to know God created us to be people of faith. He never created for us to just stay put, to be restricted, to be down, to be discouraged. He created us to be people of hope, people of faith, people of vision. So I encourage some of you today to stop thinking about how things used to be and start seeing how things can be. Because sometimes we get comfortable and we even tend to look back and kind of think, oh, it used to, we, we used to do this, we used to have this. No, start, stop thinking about the way things used to be and start seeing how things can, peep, yeah. can be. Let's Beautiful. be people that will have eyes to see, eyes to look up, eyes to lift up beyond where we are 
today. You know, 40 years ago, we started with, with a, a dream. 12. Well, 12 people. A dream. <laughs> started with 12 people with a dream on the inside. It totally and threw me up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love stopping you in your tracks. I love it. I love being able to just stop you in your tracks. That was really ago. good, wasn't it? She, I mean, she was like, you know, then she stopped. Yeah. So and she was like, I'm I don't know. I, don't know I what threw you talking, out, didn't I? Don't I? Know what you're talking about, Mr. Okay. <laughs> okay. More, more than 12 years okay, ago. Okay, then spit it out. <laughs> so 40 years ago, we started <laughs> seeing beyond. We started seeing beyond where we were, because you're right, we only had 12 people. All right, there you go. <laughs> 12 yep. people. Woo. So when it comes full circle, it's 12 people. I was just going to get it out quicker. In fact, in fact, some of those 12 people were in, are They're in still here. here today. John and Judy. Yeah. You were one of those 12 people. Rick and, Rick John and Marilyn. John and Judy. Uh, Bob Nelson. Yep. Rick and Marilyn. Greg and Teresa. Gre- Greg and Teresa weren't in that very first group of that's, 12 people, but they, they came really shortly after yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and Car- <laughs> C- Kathy Jordahl. But anyways, I yeah. thought it was awesome that I could just stop you in your So in your our tracks. whole point so, is, you know what? Everything great starts with a vision, but sometimes that great thing starts small, right? Yeah. So you have to be willing to look beyond that, look beyond the reality of what you're seeing right now. It might look small, it might look impossible. And I just remember God just put this vision in his heart and he took off with it. He did not let anything stop him. And it was so exciting that I got to be along for that journey because I could just see the faith and the vision that he had. And once God calls you to do something and you know it's God, that's exactly what you could do is just see beyond today and elevate your thinking. That's what we're trying to stir you up to do. See beyond today, elevate your thinking. God wants to do more in your future. He wants to bless you. He wants to expand your influence. He wants to expand your territory. So we just want to challenge you today to really get that in your spirit. Man, there is more. There's more for me. There's more for my church. There's more for my family. There's more God wants to do. There's more God is going to do. My current condition is not my future situation. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So lift up your eyes. And I'm not going to preach number four, but I want to give you the answers to number four. You know, when you think of a dreamer, who in the Bible do you think of as a dreamer? I think of Joseph right away. Joseph was a dreamer. And I encourage you to, to read Genesis and, and, and look back at this. But if you read the life of Joseph and, and, and he was a dreamer, if you're a dreamer, these, still, these same things can happen in your life. And, and I'm just gonna give them to you And then I want you to just read that chapter. But here's a few takeaways from the life of Joseph. He had great favor. Great favor. That that can be in your life. A a second thing is that a dream in your heart, it might be against all odds. You might be sitting here this morning thinking, how's this going to work? How's this going to happen? It was against all odds, but God still performed and made the dream come to pass. Another takeaway is continue to do right. If you watch the life of Joseph, he continued to do right. He continued to do right. He continued to do right, and God honored it. God blessed it. Over and yes. over again. One, right one more takeaway from the life of Joseph is that God, God will protect you. Yes. When you are living out a dream, God will protect you. Yeah. Read this all. This is all right there in Genesis. Another takeaway is that you are not alone. You might feel alone sometimes, but you're not alone. Yeah. When you're stepping out in your dream, you're not alone. That's right. He's right there with you. He's right there by your side. Another takeaway, just a couple more, is remain faithful. Joseph remained faithful. Joseph remained faithful in all that he was called to do, and God honored it. 
Another takeaway is you cannot be stopped. People are going to try and stop you. Circumstances will try and stop you. But if you're living out your dream, you can expect that you will not be stopped. And the last point that I want to give you is you need to execute the plan. You need to execute the plan because until you execute the plan and take the step, God can't begin to move. So some of you have got a dream, but you've never done anything to execute the plan. And you need to execute the plan. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. We want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you want to make that choice and have that assurance that you're saved and going to heaven, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to be the perfect and final sacrifice for all my sins. Today I choose to live for you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me righteous. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to send you a free gift all about your choice to follow Jesus. Simply email us at the link below with your email address. It's time now to give in our tithes and offerings. We want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in your giving. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 that God provides seed to the sower. So keep sowing that seed and God will keep providing seed to sow. The best way to give is through our Church Center app. If you don't have the app, just pull out your phone, open up your camera, hold it over the QR code on the screen, and then click the link and that will bring you directly to the giving page. Thank you again for sowing those financial seeds. We pray that God bless and multiply your gifts in Jesus' name, amen.